Lavrange is a 1964 song by Gilbert Bacard. Is that where you derived your name from? No, it's not, but, uh, but I do have that record. It took me years to find that, and I, I, I don't even know why I wanted it. It's a, it's a hard to sample, I tried. But um, no, no, originally it was just a nickname from high school, you know, and it kind of stuck with me, and when it came time to, you know, kind of create some sort of, you know, name that represented me, I mean, you know, if something lasts around you for a while, you might as well stick with it, you know, so. So there's a very interesting sort of aura of mystery around your work, and kind of a little bit difficult to find information about you online is that is that done purposely uh yeah i think you know initially i i was a little bit more enigmatic or a little bit more mystery mysterious you know maybe more by circumstance maybe it just wasn't that i i, I felt like myself was a it was a big component of what i was bringing in my music and then i think as i continued to do it um i i wanted to be more transparent and i wanted to be more human because that's what i want my music to be too um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot of information uh, out. And maybe I like that, you know. But obviously, I'm here, so uh, you know, I'm I'm willing to share a little bit more these days. I get a taste of like a European flavor to your to your style. Um, I'm just curious as to how you go for such a worldly sound, how you achieve that. Well, you know, I actually I was raised on on like jazz and and, and blues, you know, kind of just searching through radio stations when I was a kid with a with a cassette player in hand. You know, um, and that's really what influenced me the most coming in. My my background is in live instrumentation, so when I came into hip hop, I wanted to kind of bring something new, and I wanted to, uh, you know, it to really be a reflection of who I am and go at it from an artistic perspective rather than something that's more focused on the method or the craft. You know, um, you know, just something that was truly a, um, a reflection of who I am. And so, I guess that worked its way in there some somehow. I think maybe uh, maybe people associate my kind of like. Uh, um, uh, emphasis on, on artistic vision to be more European or something like that. Uh, you know, maybe maybe a bit pretentious, which is also maybe a little bit associated. I'm fine with that. That's okay. So you sample a lot of old movies and radio cuts in your music. Being so young, how is it that you have such a vast knowledge of those references? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's actually uh, it's more of a passion and just kind of an enjoyment than a knowledge. You know, I. Uh, I, those are always just things that I, I've looked for, and I've, I've lo always looked for ways to tell stories in my music, and um, and sometimes I want to do that literally. And so being able to find those cuts, they can act as my voice, you know, and they can act as a narration through the project and actually give it some sort of uh, defining narrative, you know, and that's something that's really important to me. For your critically acclaimed Old Soul project, you drew a reference from Billie Holiday. She had a very tragic yet compelling story. What is it that made you attra attracted to that? And Well, you know, as I said before, I, I think a reflection of, of humanity is such an important part in art and it's so um, uh, hard to find these days, especially when everything is perfect, everything is polished and it's trying to reflect something or trying to encapsulate something that is um, maybe unrealistic or, or not recognizable in, in life. And um, Billie Holiday is the best example that I can find of someone who um, was beautifully imperfect, and, and, um, and I think that's that's much more uh, a much better metaphor for how I view life and music and art. And so um, I've been I've always loved her work, and I've always you know she's been one of my favorite artists of all time. I, I you know um, relate to her tone and in, in, in music a lot. Um, even if her life was was far more tragic than anything that I've experienced, you know. So I wanted to make sure I did something that was more of an homage and um, and more biographical. In your videos, I've noticed that you have a similar artistic flavor to most of them. Being that you work with various artists for your projects, how is it? How do you um, balance, you know, what they want to see and what what you want to do? Uh, well, I'm. Uh, I'm, some might call me a little controlling. <laughs> um, you know, it's I just have a vision going in for the project, and a lot of the times when when I approach people about working with me, um, I try to make sure that they can fit into what I'm already doing, so that way, you know, it's not only a good uh, product, but it's also a coherent product. Product, you know, um, and so people know that from the get go. You know, when I'm working with them or, or when they're working with me. 
And so there's there's never a um, a conflict of aesthetics because you know typically people know uh, you know you don't see me produce a lot of one-off on other people's projects because my stuff um, is is maybe a little bit more abstract or or relies on the tracks the track behind it and in front of it um, you know so aesthetically in in, in these videos it, I also work with with the same people I try to develop little circles of people that I I, I know and that, and that understand where I'm coming from so Ashton Blessing the guy who's done a couple of videos for me and um, uh, Jay Brown is another guy who recently has been kind of handling the Orchid days so so when I initially started listening to your music it reminded me of Blue's Her Favorite Color album and then as I dug deeper it, I became it became clear that you've worked with him multiple times and I think you guys have a great chemistry together uh, would you consider doing a full-length project with Blue uh, similar to what he's done with Exile uh yeah yeah i think i would you know um i love his style um you know what's interesting is i i didn't hear her favorite color until after i made old soul and i went back and i listened to it and i was like where has this been like this is exactly you know and so um you know i was a fan of blue before that but i was mostly familiar with the blue and exile work and but yeah you know i mean at some point i would love to do a project with blue but you know he and i are um he and I are both very um, erratic and, and reclusive people, and so uh, I think that what makes that's what makes us uh, compatible. But it's also what makes it very hard for us to get, end up working together. How is it that the two of you linked up initially? You know, I reached out to him through uh, through my fir the first label that picked me up, which was uh, Jakarta Records uh, out of Germany. And so when I was working on the Mad Rider, I had um, I had this track that I was working with with Blue. And, uh, and they already had this existing relationship, so we kind of built off of that. Uh, do you have any dream collaborations, anybody that you'd love to work with? <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of them, you know. Um, they expand pretty far. I mean, in hip-hop, you know, I would love to work with, uh, I'd, I'd love to continue working with Blue, of course. I would love to work with Doom. Um, you know, there are a lot of uh, a lot of MCs. You know, I, I've worked with YU a lot, but I, I would really appreciate working with him a lot more. Um, you know, even uh, like uh, Quayle Chris, and um, I'm a huge fan of Open Mike Eagle as well. He's a new sign to Mellow Music Group, so love to expand on those. Yeah, cool. So, what's next for Larange? <laughs> well, my uh, my rule is when I release an album, that's the day I start working on my next album. So, by the time it comes out in public, I've been finished with it for a couple months. So, I want to make sure that I'm I'm getting going. And uh, you know, I think my next project is. It's probably time that I go back and work with another MC. So um, I really enjoyed my collaboration with Stick Figure and being able to kind of uh, blend our visions and, and kind of um, meet halfway or, or maybe combine what we do best. Um, and so creating something that that can either be symbiotic or dichotomous is, is very interesting to me. That that relationship, even in the the conflict and the harmonies, are, are equally um, kind of inspiring to me. So. Uh, going out and branching out and doing that again would be uh, definitely something I'd be interested in. Do you have any words of wisdom to give to aspiring artists? Well, uh, I would say that you're not defined by how good you are at anything in music. It's all about who you are and what you've experienced and what your perspective is. So instead of trying to craft your sound, that would craft your perspective. And um, and listen to your music at low volumes. People always listen to music at way too high volumes. Everything sounds good live, or uh, I'm sorry, at loud volumes. You know, turn it down, turn it down. If it still sounds good, then you got a good track.